Max Verstappen is the 2022 F1 World Champion. We would have been happier if this announcement was made at the ending stages of the season and not with a couple of rounds to go, but it is what it is. It doesn't take away the fact that Verstappen has been dominating the 2022 season, breaking multiple records in the way and asserting a dominant way in the first season of the new regulations. Is it the car? Yeah, Red Bull were able to invent a piece of machinery that was just unbeatable for the rest of the grid. But is it the driver too? Perez had pretty much the same car and with the same upgrades, he wasn't able to adapt as much as Verstappen, although he posed a serious threat to Verstappen in the first couple of races. Nevertheless, Verstappen has emerged as the number one driver in Red Bull yet again, and here's the story of how he became the 2022 world champion for the second year in a row. Coming after a very controversial season in 2021, Verstappen had a lot to prove to the haters. Most of the F1 world thought that the 2021 champion was kind of gifted to Verstappen by the way Abu Dhabi ended. However, the Dutchman had a lot of burden on his shoulders and it was a very hard beginning of the season too. The 2022 season saw some new rules and rest assured that it was the biggest shakeup of the F1 sport in recent times. We've seen the implementation of much bigger tires, 18 inches compared to the 13 inch tires that the F1 cars used in 2021. The whole bodywork had to change and the biggest challenge was the weight of the car, something that Red Bull has desperately struggled to keep close to the limit of 798 kilograms minimum weight. The Barcelona and Bahrain testing showed that was going to be a very interesting or should we say bumpy season all along. Due to the new regulations, the aerodynamic phenomenon of porpoising has appeared as the biggest challenge for F1 teams to overcome. That's why Mercedes struggled a lot, among other things, and we immediately saw that Hamilton won't be a threat to Verstappen in the 2022 season. But Ferrari was the team to beat in the first couple of races as the Maranello team started strongly to bring the first drivers championship after 2007 when Raikkonen won the title for the Italian team. Leclerc and Ferrari started off on a strong note and the fact that both Red Bull cars retired while Ferrari earned a 1-2 finish in Bahrain told us a lot about how the season would unfold. The second race was won by Verstappen in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, as he and Leclerc had yet another showdown of abilities just like they did in Bahrain. But at the first race, Verstappen had to deal with reliability issues, just like Perez, which is why the team missed a lot at the very start of the season. After winning the second race, Verstappen got into a rhythm because it became evident that Leclerc is going to be the man to beat until the end of the season and that we were going to watch a true showdown of skills between these two drivers. However, Verstappen's season took a massive hit yet again in the third race in Australia. Due to a fuel pump issue, Verstappen had to retire the car while Leclerc was leading with the fastest lap. It was evident that Verstappen was nowhere near close to passing Leclerc in Australia, but instead of 8 points, Leclerc extended his lead by 26 points and at this stage of the season, the Monegasque had 46 points advantage over Verstappen. Even Perez was ahead of the Dutchman and just 3 races into the season, we could see that Verstappen was going to struggle to defend the championship. But little did he know that bad luck will strike Ferrari and they will suffer in the upcoming races. In Italy, which was the fourth race of the season, Leclerc spun while trying to overtake while being on the intermediate tyres and lost a couple of places by finishing P6. Verstappen won the race with Perez following him for P2 and the championship immediately took a different turn. The following races in Miami revealed an advantage that Red Bull massively had over the other teams and that is the straight line speed. The Austrian team was faster at around 20-30 km per hour at the straight line section of the track, which is why Verstappen was able to secure yet another win. But in Barcelona, Leclerc was much faster. Unfortunately, reliability issues occurred in his engine. He dropped out and this further extended the lead. This is where it all started and in the following GP in Monaco, Leclerc suffered yet again. But this time not because of the reliability of the engine, but the tactics from his team which saw him losing three places in the pit stop. In both of these races, Red Bull was inferior compared to Ferrari and the Maranello team managed to give two wins to their fiercest rivals. The next showcase was in Baku and this was truly a nightmare for the Italian team. It seemed like we were in for an interesting race, but after Leclerc was immediately passed by Ferez at the beginning of the race, Red Bull had the upper hand. So the pit stops were going to be crucial here. 
but both Ferrari cars retired due to hydraulics issues and turbocharger failure. This was the third event this season, after the Emilia, Romagna and Barcelona, where Red Bull managed yet another 1-2 finish of the season. At this point, Perez was also considered a championship candidate because after the Monaco win, the Mexican was just 15 points behind Verstappen heading into the Baku GP. But little did the Mexican know that the championship will become a distant goal for him in the upcoming period due to the pure dominance of his teammate. By this time, Leclerc was really frustrated as to why his car just isn't working the way it should be. This was all good and perfectly welcomed by Verstappen, who saw his main rival taking a new engine in Canada, which was the ninth event of the season. This is the race that was won by Verstappen after starting in pole position, and Leclerc finished fifth after climbing from P20 on the grid. The advantage kept growing and in the next two events in Silverstone and Austria, Leclerc was able to cut down some of the lead to Verstappen. However, in Silverstone, the Marinello team had a chance of winning with Leclerc while Verstappen had a damage limitation race and finished P7. Nevertheless, the Italian team botched its tactic yet again and had to be satisfied with a P4 finish. The Austrian GP was the first time that Leclerc won a race after Australia and the tyre management turned out to be the most important thing here to win a race. That is why Leclerc managed to beat Verstappen and just when we thought that we were going to have an interesting season in the following period, the French GP happened. Leclerc spun in the barriers and once again Verstappen won the race. The lead over Leclerc had now expanded to 63 points and the lead over his teammate Sergio Perez had now reached 70 points. From this point on, the championship was pretty much in Verstappen's hands. The fact that he won races like the Hungara Ring, one in which Leclerc started at P2 and Verstappen at P10, and races like Spa where Verstappen started at P14 and took the lead in lap 12, only goes to show that the Dutchman had the most dominant car and the best skills to win in the remainder of the season. Prior to the Singapore GP, Verstappen had five wins in a row and the record ended here because he wasn't able to climb higher than P7 due to a bad qualifying session and locking up while trying to overtake Norris which ultimately saw him visiting the pits right after he exited them in the first place. Nevertheless, he won the Monza GP before that after starting on P7 and dominantly taking yet another victory in his championship winning season. Max Verstappen failed to win the championship at the Singapore GP, but he had another chance at the Japan GP. Verstappen started the qualification well, setting the fastest time in Q1 at 1.30.224. During Q2, Verstappen again set a strength time of 1.30.346. Only Perez and Alonso were faster. Verstappen closed Q2 in the third place. In Q3, there was a remarkable moment between Norris and Verstappen. While warming up the tyres on the lap after both drivers came out of the pit lane, Verstappen seemed to lose control of his Red Bull. Norris arrived at that moment at a high speed, forcing him to swerve into the grass to avoid a crash. Verstappen managed to capture pole position in the first laps of Q3. He remained just 0.010 seconds ahead of Leclerc. Carlos Sainz took P3 and Sergio Perez P4. Verstappen could theoretically become the champion at the Suzuka circuit, provided he managed to score 8 points more than his rival Leclerc. He had to finish first and he also had to drive the fastest race lap for an extra point. The race started on the soaking wet Suzuka circuit with Verstappen on pole and Leclerc on P2. Leclerc had a better start because Verstappen dared to break later in the corner, he managed to stay next to him on the outside, giving him an advantage in the next corner and keeping the lead. The bizarre weather conditions soon made it clear that racing was almost impossible. The drivers could hardly see anything and soon the first car of Carlos Sainz crashed. Salvage work followed and quite soon after, the red flag was raised. The race was halted due to heavy rain. After the race was stopped, a remarkable incident took place with Pierre Gasly. Almost immediately after the race was stopped, a tractor drove right past his car on the track. At that time, he was still driving around 200 km per hour and also had very poor visibility. Gasly was furious with the FIA and did not understand how this could happen. The FIA refuted this, stating that Gasly had ignored the red flag. The incident will be much discussed in the coming days. This event had a sad undertone as a similar incident took place in 2014 with Mauricio driver Jules Bianchi. He slipped under a recovery vehicle at the Suzuka circuit from which he died six months later. The race resumed after about two hours behind the safety car with Verstappen on P1. There was still 45 minutes of race time on the clock. 
Verstappen drove out the race excellently. Leclerc only managed to stay close at the beginning. After this, Verstappen dominated the race. He finished almost 30 seconds ahead of the rest of the drivers. At the end, there was another incident between Leclerc and Perez, who were fighting for P2. Leclerc slid off the track and shot back into the track in Perez's line. With this, Leclerc crossed the finish line second with Perez third. But just after the finish, the FIA decided to hand out a 5-second penalty to Leclerc, after which he dropped to P3 and Perez slid through to P2. It was long thought that Verstappen had failed to clinch the championship, because the FIA regulations state that if a race is interrupted for so long due to rain, the maximum number of points cannot be handed out. But it turned out there was a second version in the rulebook in which maximum points could be handed out. There was a lot of confusion also at Team Red Bull. In the end, Verstappen became world champion in Japan after Leclerc dropped to B3 due to his 5 second penalty. Max was honored, it may not be the most ideal way to win a championship, but he absolutely dominated this season. This is the second season in a row that Verstappen had, and the fact that he has dominated most races this season just goes to show that Red Bull was able to understand the physical obstacles that the new cars had to overcome. The main one was the porpoising, and Red Bull was probably the only car out there that did not suffer from this phenomenon at all, which is why their cars were able to develop much more stable conditions for the drivers. So whether you like it or not, Verstappen clinched a championship with a couple of races to spare, and although it's not interesting for the fans to watch seasons like this, it is what it is, and we're here to witness it. What do you think about Verstappen's 2022 season? Do you think that it's just a car, or the driver has a lot to do with it? Let us know in the comments below.